Yo, Shalom. All praises to the Most High. Yo, yo, what this is sound some YYBY. So I'm doing the video like to show y'all how I have my keyboard set up with reason. Or and normally be the same process with any other dog. And I don't have too many crazy things set up, but it's I have important things set up as you can see. <laughs> um At this moment, right, I have a, I have a, a, a Lesis V125 keyboard. I don't have so many keyboards, man. I had a very expensive ones, 88 keys, 64 keys. Yeah, I have different versions. Hell, I I, I even have a travel. Um, hold on, let me show y'all something right quick. I even have a travel version, a, vi a mini of the same v125 so this is my travel one if i can't pack this one i don't feel like bringing this one i had a bigger version before this but i love the you know i love all the 16 pads and everything on the keyboard and all that you know what i'm saying so i gotta have that i definitely gotta have that you feel me so um so i'm just showing you some so i can maybe maybe hope inspire somebody who or producing anything man so all right we all know we got the stop play buttons connected you know to the DAW record uh you know loop stop re rewind forward and stuff like that but these are these are little things I want to show you I want to deal with right here and I'm gonna tell you what I got set up inside the DAW um <clears throat> let me let me open up a template no recording template like quick. All right, so now if I'm recording the artist right inside Reason, um, this mute button is for it's for that beat track. It's for the beat track. If you notice, you go right here. If or if you go to the mixer, right here when I press the mute button, it mute that. The reason why I got that mute button right there like that. So when I'm recording the song and I'm playing back. And the artist want pauses in the music. I can put pauses in the music. Okay. Now the gain knob. This gain knob. What they gain knob for? That gain knob is for the volume of the beat. You know that's what the gain knob for. So when you go up here, that gain right here. That's what that's for. So if I want the beat lower or louder, I could turn the, 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 the you know the, the volume down of that music so it can fit with the vocals when I'm doing a mic check before I record the artist and everything. So that's what the game for for that for that you know that beat track. Now remember, if I got the stems of the beat, then it's a different approach and there still be a mute button on the overall on the overall music and everything. But but I still have this kind of set up the same way, in a way, you know. All right, the tape. What the tape is for, a lot of artists love that. Let me see, all right, quick. Give me one second. A lot of artists love that tape, that tape style in their music. I love it too, in beats and everything. So you hear that tape style where it's like it rewinds back or it stops and it slows down and it speeds back up. That's what this is for. So when I turn this on, I press tape. I press the tape and then stop it. Play it, stop it, play it, stop it. And then I can, I can record that with automation until the sequencer. So I got that option. Cause that's a that's a that's a very popular dope option that been used for years. Even when the tape rails is going on and all that type of stuff. The tape reels and even to this day it's, it's a sound i think it's an effect that would never go away never go away so that's why i got that already in my preset at the top so when i decide to use it i turn it on and then i record the you know the uh the information all right the limiter game is this knob now i'm gonna show you if i open up this device and i go down right here to the maximizer right I turn the maximizer on that's what that's for the reason why that's right there because one uh 
when it's time for me to master my music, because as you can see, I already got my master plugins in here. They just not on. That's my last result. Once I do everything I'm satisfied with, then I get that knob and I turn it up and I boost that joint up to where it's it's really loud. You know, you know, cause that's you know the maximizer limit is the last result to get that music loud, like the music that compete in the radio on the radios and in the club. But that maximizer doesn't make it sound big. That's the other plugins and your style of how you master and everything. That that's the process of that. You feel me? So I have this limited game already right here, so I can turn that knob. Also have this limited game for a reason where sometimes when I'm doing a recording session, sometimes I turn these tracks down low. Not low, low, but sometimes I turn them down where they don't come, you know, battle with the music and everything, you know, in, in, you know, in the headphones where they're not too loud in the headphones. Well, I take that back. I keep this where it's at, as long as it's not peaking. So, you know, as long as the volume on the headphones is good, if it, if that's too loud, I'll turn the volume of the headphones down. But, um, you know, that's what I use that for. The limiter, uh, I take that back. But I, what I was about to talk about with the limiter, that's what I use with the CR. Because in another, in Studio One, I use this limiter game for a different reason. Okay? Two reasons. The first reason what I told you, and reasons I just told you that I use it for when I'm mastering. A second reason I use it in another dog for if the music is a certain volume and they want it, and I got the headphone volume already loud, but it's not loud enough in them. So what I do, I crank this limiter gain up a little bit to make the, the overall music in the headphones loud to give the artists a you know a feel and a vibe when they recording the music. You know, when they rap it and everything. So that's another story. All right, so now now the CR, what the CR is for is that when an artist recording with me, they say, Hey man. You know, uh, you know, everything sound good. My vocals sit right with the beat when I'm rapping. But can you just raise the music up a little bit? You know, the overall music and everything. You know, so if I got my headphone volume all the way up, then that's when I go to the control room. And I got that set up with the control room now. That's what I'm using that for, the control room. So I'm always playing with my headphone volume and my control room to get that vibe. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's keep going. So now, see, I'm in the studio and I, you know, I got the music cranked up and it's booming. Everybody vibing and everything. And somebody want to say something real quick, but I don't want to, you know, change the volume or turn the volume down too fast. I can just press 20 dB. See right here, it's 20 dB. Press that. It bring the music down 20 dB. When they finish talking, you know, it's back to the results. You, you get what I'm saying? Also, what I did with this, with the combinator, and this company, this is my super master output sweet song. So it's kind of like my master output that I use. So I use the a correlation at the top. I use the uh, a mono to stereo converter that you know to change the music. The mono to stereo. I got a multi band limiter. I got an M class equalizer, multi band compressor, a compressor, regular compressor. I got a, a, a GQ7 EQ stereo imager maximizer. Now, do I use all these together all the time? No. No, sometimes it's, it's different ones I use, but normally this is the main things I use. But now, what this mono button is for is exactly for this button right here. So I can mix in mono. Boom. Turn it off. I can listen to it in mono or I can you know, mix it in mono. Just that simple. And that's it. Now, all these other buttons, I you know they're not connected to anything, but what I use them for, if I want to use anything random that I want to connect when I'm making a beat. So if I got an instrument, if I got a VST instrument in here, you know, uh, if I got a VST instrument and I'm doing something, I want to connect a certain knob or something like that. That's what I use. One, two, three, four. These four knobs right here. And I use all these other buttons for I connect these to certain things. Then also the bottom buttons down here to say one fourth, one fourth, one eight, one eight T. So, you know, y'all know what that is. That's when you want the you know your, your, the certain role with the keyboard. You know you you know your keyboard can do a certain role. So that's it, man. It's simple. That's what I have my keyboard set up for. You know, all the time I sometimes I sit back and I just try to find other ideas to you know make my session my my templates better, make my session better. You know, and everything. And uh, I change things before. I change things and make things better. And sometimes I go back to the old way. Because as I'm recording a lot of artists, 
you know, sometimes an artist might do something that inspire me or make me think like, okay, just in case another artist might want this, let me have this already prepared. And this come with experience. This doesn't mean that you will notice and all your new producers and engineers, you won't know all this at the beginning. You know, even if a person tell you, but with experience and time, you will understand these things and you will always change a template and have different templates for different situations. Like me, I have a template for, for beat, master, mixing, recording. A different template. So yeah, this is why why BY man. This is how I got my you know my leases uh V125 keyboard set up to uh reasons and other dolls. And you know, this is the way I had it set up with a lot of other dolls and everything. So when I come up with other ideas, like I said, I connect the other knobs to it. If you have any questions, hit me up. Drop it down at the bottom. This is why why peace.